uh, I guess that's why they always have. I guess that's why they always have the pre-introduction so everyone can jump in. But I assume people will just simply watch the replay or something. So I'm gonna wait for this to load, and then because I always count as one over here, and then uh, I gotta pause myself over here. Okay. Oh, I was supposed to copy the Breitbart article. So anyway, yeah, this is still scuffed because normally I don't, uh, I don't uh, actually, you know, have to do all this and then start. I usually just start right off and then upload it. But eh, I guess we're kind of thing. So anyway, uh, I don't remember what's the intro that I always do. So, oh yeah, it's hey everybody, it is me, Johnson Chan. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been really busy ever since uh, Trump had the election stolen from him. So I've just been farming my tweets. I don't know why this thing's not loading. You know, my social media profile is actually starting to explode. I mean, everyone's is actually starting to explode because obviously everyone's really pissed. Specifically, people on the left, uh, people on the right. Um, why is this is wrong? This was from a while ago uh and oh tr no wonder my my farming of tweets uh isn't uh, hold on I, I gotta make sure i get in on this because trump for some strange reason trump actually seems to delete uh this tweet so i don't know why he does that but i'm just gonna go back and farm it so <laughs> i gotta uh, like i keep clicking the wrong stupid thing like this is actually breaking stuff. All right, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do this. I I don't I don't know why Trump does it. This is the second time I've noticed him doing this, because he wrote the exact same tweet like an hour ago, and then I farmed it for what it's worth, and then now he's deleted it and then reposted it. So which means I lose all the farming ability because the original tweet doesn't exist. So I I I don't know. Uh, I guess why don't wait. Hey Vapor F. All right, so I guess I can't really wait too much longer because I think everyone's in bag talk right now, uh, training stocks too. So, yeah, yeah, I mean that's just how the timing goes. So, um, I right, only collect my thoughts because aside from this, I didn't do any research. Like I'm still like trying to like catch up on all the Twitter stuff, and then now we've got Trump uh, deleting and retweeting stuff. So basically, I wrote a tweet last night before when I was in on my bed. And uh, first in the chipper, yeah, apparently Mark Baderberg, because like, or Fuckerberg, is uh, buying out ballot boxes too. It, it's like ridiculous. And of course, I made sure to, you know, because they conveniently leave out the old friends part specifically, right? So now I know they're trying to blame China for everything. Well, this it's like the, the censorship is just like pisses me off. I mean, it doesn't piss me off, but it's just very frustrating because I don't actually feel angry. Right, because I forgave my mom and dad already. So yeah, and there you go. See, that's the tweet I was farming, and then Trump deleted it. So I just reposted my shit. Um, wait, it's here, right? Like, oh, because I gotta refresh my page. Oh yeah, it is there. Okay, there you go. All right, well, Trump didn't delete that. So where am I? Where am I? Uh, this is from today. Uh, okay. Ah, here we go. Wait, where is? Oh yeah. So, so I'm still trying to try to get people to just not vote for the GOP because I still see it in the replies and I'm farming like just a couple people, not a lot, at least percentage wise. It's like I want to say ten to twenty percent, and twenty percent is very generous. But yeah, it's like you know, like the GOP has been constantly backstabbing us for like decades, right? And I only know as much as anything after 2008 because that's when I started taking this politics shit seriously. So I, you know, I go through the fast thing. I didn't, I didn't have room to write Tea Party, but yeah, we got Tea Party, the GOP betrayal, they stole from Ron Paul, right? And then um, on top of that, Purdue doesn't even show up to a congressional debate to, to represent the GOP. Like he's literally just, just doesn't care. And to make matters worse, it's like, you want us to vote for this? Like, you know, like, it's okay when Trump says he's not going to show up to a debate because he actually has a reason. Here, Purdue doesn't have any reason. He's just like, I don't feel like going. Like, what the hell is that? It's like totally different. And then we want this loser to, like, 
represent us in Congress. You know how weak that is, right? Because obviously I can't say it all in this tweet. It's like it's it's so stupid. Uh, and then how dumb and slow are people, right? I didn't specifically say people on our side, but that's basically what I'm implying. Like the Republican Party passes open border visa bill, passes an open refugee program with like fucking Hong Kong, and then these then then some of these idiots want me to hold the line for this stupid shit, right? And then now we have Section 230. That's just gonna be that's gonna that like where big tech has been ramming, uh, you know, hard up hard object up the ass of every single conservative and banning us all over the place. And now they want to keep helping them. That's what I'm holding the line for, right? And then, uh, yeah, I don't want. To, and then by the same ass nine logic, some enjoy whacking off with a cheese cheese grater. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. I actually stole this from uh, one of those Hitler meme downfall videos, where, like you know, where you see Hitler in the bunker and then he's just complaining about something. Uh, and then yeah, and then here, and then yeah, I, I'm actually starting to start pushing my D live more because it's actually doing pretty well. Uh, oh yeah, and thanks to all these people that have actually fought. I don't actually know how I got all these people. Uh, and yeah, from Twitter. So uh, I did donate to Nick Fuentes yesterday, so maybe that might be what it is. So yeah, we're actually growing pretty well. This is like what my second stream or third stream because I only do this stuff once a week. I usually I'm usually on Bag Talk, uh, but I could consider doing a lot more streams. But the problem is I need like actual content. But I usually get my actual info from the dailywire.su staff so you know I, I can't be showing that <laughs> right I, I can't even use archive.fo so it's like i'm kind of like stuck uh yeah so yeah so pretty much i mean i think that's it for now because you know i'm just kind of summing up because i do have to try to keep this video to one hour but the good news is trump is pushing very hard uh i'm not going to play this video because technically we're on a fox news complete boycott right because that's what nick's doing that's what i'm doing uh, i'm not even going to retweet this but oh i do want to go over this though um so they're trying to make as i was telling the finance chat like the you know where we're making money now actually they're actually making money right now <laughs> in bank talk uh, but i don't i don't like doing fast stock trades it's like that's not my thing like i, I i'm pretty comfortable with what i got uh where the hell is it um is it this no that's the election oh yeah it's this one so basically everyone's trying to throw china under a bus which is fine because they are definitely guilty where is it uh they're definitely guilty of this but the problem is you're made to think that it's all china now i actually watched the source of that video i don't want to post it here but it, someone did post it. It was basically a seven and a half minute video where you see a Chinese professor. He looked like a high level guy because uh, he has access to like the embassies and stuff. But he's a professor. And he was actually talking about China's old friends that he will not mention. And then he also actually said big nose. And then he actually said uh, Jewish. And uh, I don't think he said Israel. Uh, actually, he might have said Israel. Uh, quite a few times. It was just very, uh, it was very subtle and low key because he said, well, we're not supposed to be saying this out in public, but for the purposes of this uh, forum, you know, I'm going to just say, because just clap your hands if you know exactly what I'm referring to. Everybody, like there must have been like a thousand, two thousand at least Chinese people all scrunched up together, of course, because they all know, we, we all know it's a hoax, the coronavirus. Oh, I better be careful. Oh, well, I, mean, I mean, the coronavirus is real. Because I forgot I got to post this on YouTube. The coronavirus is real. I misspoke. I misspoke. The coronavirus is real. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, I forgot. What, I, I lost my train of thought. So he said that, and then he said, oh, that he started going into. Now remember, as you know, we don't accept dual citizenship. So he's referring to China. In China, you cannot have dual citizenship. There's a specific reason for it, and he goes into a whole whole thing, and then. Uh, they conveniently leave that all out in this. This is why, like, if I didn't forgive my parents, I'd be very angry. But, you know, like JLP says, you don't want to get angry. It's uh, it's unmanly, you're acting like a woman, and it's just bad. But, yeah, it, it's like, I, I can just see what's going on. So they're making China the fall guy. Uh, you know who, the tribe, is going to get away with it, maybe. Uh, but they made a mistake, though, because people are going to find that video, because it's all over YouTube for now. And Trump is retweeting this. So that means he must have seen that video, too. So, you know, after B.B. Netanyahu backstabbed him with the Joe Biden thing, well, you know, 
Uh, it's not normal when a sitting center is forced to retire because his errors in Poland were so low that he would come, he would have to come out of the other and, and had to win a great job, Jeff. Oh, I think he's trying to troll Jeff Flake. Uh, Jeff Flake. Oh, man, I don't have anything witty to say, but I do want to farm this tweet, but no. Oh, let's just see. You were on Baked Alaska, and I might be it. Oh, yes, I actually was on Baked Alaska, but that was, um... But I got the burst of thingamajig from it on Saturday at Sunday. <clears throat> this current uh, this current burst was actually way after. So I'm pretty sure it was actually uh, me donating to Nick. Uh, but either way, I obviously will take it. So I guess I'll just have to let this farming go. So, All right. So anyway, that's Trump. That's the GOP. Uh, the good news is Trump knows everything. We're going to win. Uh, it's just a matter of like just how... Uh, like how rough it's going to be for us and uh you know as christians we have to learn to take the thing as jlp because i actually just watched the uh, jlp's replay of his church service on sunday so uh yeah and then where's the robert barnes tweet so before we do move on we do need to look at oh my god so i tweet so much crap that it's hard to find here we go so, first of all, I did not know that you could actually elect somebody this late, but basically, Robert, let's click over here, in 1876, by the way, I might be getting shadow banned, maybe, or maybe today's just a slow day, but I'll have to check my replies after I'm done with the, the stream. In 1876, they decided the election contest for presidential electors less than 48 hours before inauguration day, which was in March back then. Any talk about having to decide by December 8th is not constitutionally rooted. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually bullshit, the December 8th line but i guess for whatever reason we're just going to go along with it what's your matter more an honest vote or a rushed vote so the important thing is they decided the election two days before on january 18th so i'm actually going to be very annoyed if that's actually how far it's going to go like meaning trump's going to wait literally till this day because that basically means my predictive bets are all going to go to shit essentially uh and then i'm only going to make like 15 20 grand which might sound like still is like yeah but you know you have to remember for the past two and a half years i've been losing 50 to 75 bucks a day every day because you know you know altcoin mining went to total dog shit so uh yeah it's uh kind of really need the money especially since i'm going to all these rallies and stuff and i'm going to the one on uh, dc this saturday apparently there's going to be another thing on sunday so i i don't even know but i'll probably just worry about it later all right, so anyway, what's our timestamp? Uh, 12, that's not too bad, 13 minutes. And we already went over Trump, so I could probably move on to just pure crypto stuff. So Bitcoin searches for last week is at 21 for Bitcoin. So it's still kind of decent. Uh, it's going down a little bit, but it's still pretty strong. So I guess that's a pretty decent indicator. I was kind of starting to wonder, like, what effect... Uh, the lockdown is going to start having on cryptocurrencies because last time around oh i don't have my um shoot i should probably turn on my proxy because i don't have crux open uh let me see i this should not interrupt the stream i think let me see um because i have to wait for my proxy to connect all right, 1345, 1346. All right, we're, we are now in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Because the problem, because uh, the problem this time around is since Bitcoin's going to go up even more, right, the value of these cryptocurrencies are going to go down. And also because of the lockdown, normie people over here may not have enough money to just speculate and buy any random cryptocurrency because that's what happened in 2017. So in that, in, so in a sense, that way, it's actually somewhat different. And then, of course, the duration of this bull run may also be different. So there are a lot of extra factors here. Uh, so that's definitely something I'm going to have to just keep an eye on. Of course, if Trump loses, then, I mean, it's it, it's over. Like, cryptocurrency will skyrocket the majors, but, yeah, I can kiss, I can kiss goodbye all the non, uh, you know, basically the shitty proof-of-stake coins. But, uh, but, I mean, Baked Alaska did tell me on Saturday, um, actually, yeah, you were, actually, so you guys saw on the stream, like we talked about, I didn't, I did not know that DLive tokens are actually, um, whatchamacallit, 
Yeah, I didn't actually know they were proof of stake based. I thought they were token based or something. So I, I definitely have to look into it when I have a little more time. All right, so let's see. Bitcoin's at 18,000. I better refresh this just to make sure. But trade volume seems to be standard. Um, I better drink water while I wait. Well, yeah, this, today is December 8th. So the XRP flare token split's going to be coming soon. The, the cutoff is December 12th, 0, 0, 0, universal standard time, whatever, like UTC, whatever that is. So I think it's universal time. So that basically means I have to get all my shit in before basically, on basically December 11th. So I can get basically double my money when the fork happens. But uh, Bitcoin's at 18,897. I eh, don't really care too much about the dominance or volume. It's about, it's about right. XRP is at 59.3 cents. So yes, it's finally cooled down. Stellar Lumens is probably cool. Because I, I didn't bother with Stellar Lumens. I consider it the same as everything else up here. But yeah, it's going down like everybody else. So it's like crypto is just, you know, kind of just deciding to just chill for a bit. It's still pretty high though, compared to what it was before. So that's good. So Litecoin's at $80.72. Damn. I was really hoping it would just stay at $94. So, because, you know, I've got... I'm not Litecoin that I can just dump for a fiat just so I can just refund my bank account. Especially since I put in, I now have put in eight and nine thousand dollars into predicted. Right, I'm already gonna write off seventeen fifty of it because because I, I usually max my bets at eight fifty. Because I'm assuming this is, this Georgia bet's gonna just completely turn against me as, as worst case scenario. So, you know, it's uh, kind of aggravating. All right, so let's see what the markets are doing today. Uh. Let's go here. Uh, I did post a screenshot yesterday, but I did buy a call option on AMD after we did that bag talk. I bought a January 2022 call option for $1,315. So eventually when things, you know, get better, you know, and they will, you know, I'll probably just sell it sometime in, you know, 2021. And we'll see how, how far up uh, AMD goes up because they have superior products compared to intel and possibly nvidia and it's cheaper too and right now the demand for all all these computer parts like cpus and video cards is still like insane so uh yeah there's gonna be plenty of market share because nvidia is worth like half a trillion dollars yeah yeah you did hear me right half a trillion with a t so it's like 476 billion i didn't know nvidia was that big and then intel's worth like 225 billion and amd is only worth 111 billion because they've been suppressed by Nvidia and Intel, especially by Intel through the uh, at, through all their intellectual property theft and other antitrust stuff, so it's uh, it's uh, it's definitely room for AMD to grow. So I just want to capture that while you know while I wait for the Section Two Hundred and Thirty shit with Trump to you know work itself out. I absolutely we hope that it does because obviously we need it to grow the movement so we could say so we could say what we really want to say, and I don't have to self censor so much. <clears throat> and uh, and on top of that, you know, uh, wrecking big tech is going to tank their stocks. So I'm already looking at tw uh, tw uh, Twitter, Twitter <laughs> uh, puts so that when Twitter drops by like 33 percent or 50 percent, you know, I'm going to make I'm going to make some serious money. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, I don't really see anything uh, interesting on Yahoo. Uh, it's just more coronavirus bullshit because I don't want to co cover coronavirus stuff anymore. It's ju it's just very annoying. U.S. states poised to sue Facebook for monopoly abuse. Yeah, for some reason, of all the big tech companies, the governments, especially the shitlib governments, definitely seem to have a big problem with Facebook. So um, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just a weird situation. But I'm not going to bother with this because you know what's going to actually happen, right? I mean, at this point, my trust level is so low in just about everything. Uh, everything as in the government and the court processes, it's like, you know, why do I even want to bother, right? And especially they're doing this dumb retard shit with the election theft, so. Uh, let's see, Rebel, so I'm up on Rebel, that's good, because this is what I own, I own Rebel, I own Region Financial, which is RF, so that's doing well. I dumped all my Microsoft stock, so I used it to buy more Rebel stock, actually. Uh, but I made, uh, I made a decent amount of money on Microsoft, I came, I made like 2200 bucks, uh, which, which now cuts into the losses from earlier this year from my MRL losses, which was 30,000. So now I've only lost 28,000 on paper. Oh, I mean, I'm already like, I'm already back up to almost to where I was. 
but it, it's just annoying having to play catch up. But I do know for next time. Next time, I'll only buy when there's a clear correction or a market crash. I'm never buying during a uh, in the middle of a bull run ever again. In terms of stocks, for cryptocurrency, that's okay because you know I'm able to flip everything. Uh, AMD, and I already went over AMD. <clears throat> um, Zoom over Cave. Yeah, again, yeah, I'm gonna do. All right, so nothing here. So, where's the search? I guess we're gonna have to do it this way. So JMC coin uh, is pretty much stuck at one now. I mean, Bitcoin's going up so much that I actually have to start thinking about what I'm going to do uh, with JMC coin. Because Mitch said he's going to sell the JMC and 404 coin social medias to someone else, which kind of annoys me because we were in this together and then I paid for everything and then I was just going to sell it off. It's just like, you know, it's, it's like whatever, you know. So anyway, it'll eventually, you'll eventually get some sales at sub one Satoshi's, as you can see here. But um, as Bitcoin continues to go up, it's uh, it's going to be a problem. I'm actually considering going back to the compound coin because at least they still have a pretty good market listing on South Exchange for the do uh, compound coin, dog coin pair. So when everything skyrockets, I think it'll still be viable. I mean, that's the problem. Everything just keeps skyrocketing. And then my game, I mean, I'm working on uploading... A seditionist tower defense to Google Play. So right now the hurdle I'm gonna have to bypass because there's so much shit going on. I just don't have time to work on the game um, for Google Play because that's because I actually need to see like how much traffic I can actually generate with no advertising there, and I can actually start making money off of that too. Like that's also important because when I make the second game, I'm gonna definitely put that on the mobile app, Google Play. And if it makes money, I'm able to expand, you know, the America First reach. And on top of that, I get rich-ish off of it. So, like, it's like, it's got the perfect synergy and harmony and all that good stuff. So, again, I just have to, it's, it's something minor. It's like the APK file size, which is the format that you upload everything to a mobile phone. At least for Android. Uh, it has to be 100 megabytes or lower. My thing takes up 387 megabytes. But that doesn't make sense because... All the AAA mobile games take up way more space than that, so I, I just have to watch. I have to rewatch the YouTube video that I found a process to do it, and then you know get around it. Because uh, Google does allow for you to upload more than 100 MB, but it's just a little convoluted. So that's JMC coin. Uh, because there's so and then there's, we got SCOTUS later on at 11 a.m. So that's in one hour from now. Because right, because because we're we're waiting for SCOTUS to take up the Pennsylvania case. I have a lot of shit lip bops trying to say, they're not going to take up the case. They're going to reject it. Trump lost. Just just, just take a dill and shove it up your ass and just accept Joe Biden as your 46th president. And they, you know, they have like that F word. I better not. I got to upload on YouTube. So you can figure it out for yourself, the, the, the soy boy voices. All right. So 404 coin. And of course, I just insta block them. So, you know, whatever. Uh, 404 coins at 37 to 38 satoshis of a uh, Bitcoin. It's doing pretty well because uh, again, it's the only, it's the uh, best working proof of stake coin. But eventually, it'll just go down like everything else. So you know, just take advantage while you still can. Uh, two by two, two by two is still doing okay. It's at one to two. Uh, looks like people are still buying a lot of it. This is like five percent of a 5.5 percent of a Bitcoin. So two by two should do should do okay for for a while. Um, two by two Ricks. So Mitch told me that they're going to convert Ricks to a uh, token, a DeFi token, uh, which is nice. But I mean, I don't know what he's going to use it for. But I mean, it gets the uh, process started. But basically, he's going to do a swap. But the original, but this Ricks will still uh, be active. So for me personally, there's no point in me holding a Ricks token because it's not going to be using anything. I can't mint with it. So you know, but it uh, serves as a good temporary use case to just burn some of these rick coins so you know fine by me it keeps it alive four to five but it's really worth three to four so you know uh that's why i really have to get my game out but even then i mean i don't know it's uh i mean i'm only gonna accept probably 100 coin and speed coin because honestly those are the two crypto projects i have full control over right because i don't want any of this bullshit where it's like well i don't feel like doing the social media works so i'm just going to sell it off jason sorry it's like what do you the, the, what's the point of me partnering with anybody 
Uh, I didn't tell Mitch that directly, but I'm just it's just it's just annoying. It's just annoying. And he wonders why he still has money problems. Anyway, 100 coin is at 4.4 Satoshis to 4.9 Satoshis. You know, uh, uh, I'm thinking when Bitcoin hits a million, I think 100 coin and speed coin especially should be able to survive that. But we're going to be at like three decimal places. Uh, and it's again annoying because, you know, the scale of Bitcoin is just so huge. So maybe if I did get the game out and then figure out how to implement the BTC pay open source, open source, source open source software for my game to start accepting cryptocurrency payments, then I can have people just say, yeah, I can create like a special perk where you can only get it if you deposit 100 coin or speed coin, then that'll be the use case. Uh, you know, I make it cheap, you know, cause it's like five, 10 bucks or whatever. I mean, the real big thing is if I can get my game to have a real money auction house. So basically what, like remember the Diablo three real money auction house, I need that implemented in my game. And then on steam, like you can't trade dollars, but people will still trade because Hey, I'm making money off of the seditionist strategy game, and then you know I'm gonna be building up my Steam wallet so I can go buy other video games or buy other shit on the Steam market. So it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. We're gonna have very good like free auto marketing, auto content generator because people are gonna make videos like here's how you can use here's what you can buy in seditionist to make money off of you know whatever Steam and whatever, and then all that stuff. And then like, you know, like that's why these video game companies are, are like, you know, multi hundred billion dollar industries. I did not want to click that. So it's like it's uh, it's all real chat. I just have to figure out how to tap into all that stuff. And then we're going to definitely tap into it. And then eventually if I make enough money, then I can actually make my TV show, which is our streaming series, whatever the hell you want to call it these days. So um, and that's and that's where the real magic happens. So that's 100 coin, speed coin, speed coin. Yeah, I mean, I made it so that it only meant five coins per block. So that's why this price is going to be the most stable. Uh, it's at 8.5 to 12 points of Toshis of Bitcoin. I do see the buying pressure finally starting to do something for a change. So, uh, excuse me, because I have burps so I get hiccups. So we'll see uh, We'll see how it goes when Bitcoin eventually starts skyrocketing to say 100K, then 200K. But it's going to be uh, it's gonna be pretty intense pressure. Uh, let me look at that. Uh, thank you to the... I don't even know how many people are, but thanks for everyone subscribing on BitChute, uh, GMC Radio, because we're going to spread the word. Uh, everyone over Trump. Uh, I don't think he's got anything here. I also missed this picture, but yeah. I can't say what I, oh, oh yeah, you can't see it. I can't say what I want to say about these, about these, ah, all right, but yeah, and then nothing new on Nick's thing, all right, all right, went over that, let's go back to my thing here, oh, actually, can you see, because uh, I love the numbers here, I love these numbers, oh, you can see, 20,660, so I actually had four, eight, oh man, is Twitter starting to finally delete my shit? It's, it's always, you know, freaking Twitter, man. Uh, oh, yeah, nothing new here. All right. So uh, before we look into that article, because I do want to read that article, where is Point Telegraph? All right, let's see if we got anything blockchain stuff here. Jack Dory Square commits $10 million to green energy for Bitcoin money. Of course. Uh, but that's technically good, right? He's still very pro-Bitcoin, so that's always good. Bitcoin price risks lose critical... Tech okay, I don't want to do t a TA crap. Microsoft, MicroStrategy will issue 4 million securities to buy more Bitcoin. All right, that's good. More more money. Carby DM lost a thread over Leaf for the rebrand plan. Oh, somebody already has Carby Diem? I assume this is a trademark issue. Institutions will predict Bitcoin from Garner Orange, Eric Voorhees. I actually, I do want to read this. I mean, I think this is bullshit because... Obviously, globalists and corporations are in on this, but you know this is definitely important because they actually want to start regulating. Uh, I saw on Twitter like a couple of threads about they want to start regulating uh, cryptocurrencies. So, which means we can't get rich off of it, because uh, that's always the play. D D D. Bitcoin bearish alert as four four about to move for the first time. No, uh, Bitcoin's market cap will flip gold. 
Oh, yeah, the Wicked Lost Twins are just like me. They hate gold and silver, apparently, which is great because I don't like it either. Uh, but, I mean, some people could still trade it or hold it or whatever. I mean, it's still money, but, you know, I'd rather just have crypto. Uh, well, I did that. Uh, we already went over this because this thing's not going to be moving until later today. All right, so uh, let's see. So, yeah, it's not too bad. What's the. No, it's a good thumbnail. So Chris Kolbach, Texas case challenges election directly at the Supreme Court. So first of all, I did not know that states could sue other states, uh, which I find hilarious. But I, this is America. You can sue anybody, apparently. I guess that really is true. Uh, on Monday, just before midnight, the state of Texas filed a lawsuit that's far more important than all the others surrounding the presidential election of November 3rd. That's a pretty big claim. And this is written by Kobach, and we love Kobach because he's definitely pro law, pro Trump, pro America first. Texas brought a file lawsuit against four states that did something they cannot do. They violated the U.S. Constitution for their conduct in the election. And this violation occurred regardless of the amount of election fraud that may result in. The four defendant states are Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Yes, I have bets in all of these. Texas filed the suit directly in the Supreme Court. Article 3 of the Constitution lists a small number of categories. Of cases in which the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction, one of... I just checked my microphone. It was going to be hilarious if I did this whole thing and I did not have my microphone active. Because I also have to hook up my boom mic so that we don't have to use the camera mic uh, microphone. Uh, where was I? Small number of categories of cases in which the SCOTUS has original jurisdiction. One of the car these categories concerns controversies between two or more states. Texas's suit is exactly that. The Supreme Court has opined in the past that it may decline to accept such case as it's extraordinary, but it has come upon the High Court to take this case, especially when it presents as such a clear, cut and dried question of constitutional law and when it could directly, indirectly decide who is sworn in on president. The Texas suit is clear and presents a compelling case. The four offending states each violated the U.S. Constitution in two ways. Yeah, this is basically what Sidney Powell's lawsuit is arguing. And it's the reason why it's getting rejected in all the state uh, courts. And the appellate court, which is the court before the Supreme Court itself in D.C., uh, they're basically arguing uh, it's unconstitutional. First, they violated the Elector's Clause of Article 2 of the Constitution when executive or judicial, judicial officials in the states changed the rules of the election without going through the state legislatures. That is true. The Elector's Clause requires that each state shall appoint its presidential electors in such a manner as the legislator thereof may direct. Uh, that's true. Um, in the early years of the Republic, most state legislative, how long is this article? Okay. How much time do I have? Oh, we're at 33. That's fine. In the early years of the Republic, most state legislators appointed their presidential electors directly <sighs> without holding a popular election for president that would change during the early decades of the 19th century. The regardless, of, okay. regardless of whether a state appoints electors by a vote in the legislature or a vote for the people, it is the state legislature and only the state legislature that sets the rules. Yeah. The U.S. Constitution is extremely explicit on this and was done on purpose because the founding fathers knew something like this would happen. Thus, when the Pennsylvania Supreme Court extended by three days the deadline for receiving mail-in ballots, contrary to law passed by the state legislature, the state court changed the rules in violations of electors' clause. Similarly, the Georgia Secretary of State responded, this is why Pennsylvania is going to flip to Trump, uh, which means we have 49 minutes before SCOTUS clears their docket. Um, SCOTUS blog events. Uh, have they updated today? Uh, no, it is still blank. Okay, so, you know, this could be good. After the Germany versus, yes, countries are suing people here in America or vice versa. Um, whatchamacallit? Yeah, we're going to have until 11 to 5 p.m. And then they're going to be doing, oh, wait, I mean, wait, today is Tuesday. Whoops. Okay, I meant Facebook versus whatever, and then whatever the hell this case is. So basically after 11 p.m., do they list more than three? Yeah, but basically, I mean, 11 a.m., you know, we're going to have five, six hours of SCOTUS to maybe even go over the Pennsylvania case, because it's still clear, uh, blank. Uh, agreement released with the Democratic Party, Georgia, the modified the signature variable spelled out by Georgia, that change of the rules also violated the elector's clause. 
Okay, so basically the piece of shit trader Raffensperger, he's the Secretary of State for Georgia, basically just bypassed the state legislature and just did whatever they want. The second constitutional violation occurred when individual counties in each of the four states changed the way they could receive value and treat ballots. 20 years ago in the landmark case Bush v. Gore, SCOTUS held that it violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Which is why John Roberts isn't, like, he's, is he going to override his own opinion from Bush v. Gore? Because John Roberts it was part of this thing. When one floor county treated ballots one way and another floor county treated ballots a different way, voters have the constitutional right to have their ballots treated equally from county to county. So this is also what Sidney Powell is also arguing. That is an incredibly uh, F-word and G-word uh, picture. Uh, so when election officials in Wayne County, Michigan, ignore the requirements of Michigan law and deny poll watchers access to vote counting while other counties in Michigan follow the law, that violated the Equal Protection Clause. Oh, that's actually really good. Okay. Similarly, in Wisconsin, the administrator of Milwaukee Elections Commission also ignored requirements blah, 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 of Wisconsin law. Direct election workers write in the addresses of witnesses on the outlaws containing mail-in ballots, while ballots without witness addresses were deemed invalid elsewhere. That resulted in unequal call, uh, treatment, which is true. Uh, they counted, they filled it in for Democrats and they told Republicans they could not, um, they could not uh, fill that out. So that's what all those hearings talked about with the witnesses. Okay, so now it's starting to make sense. It's also, um, so that's, it's also probably a felony crime. So, you know, where are the arrests? That's actually why I'm just getting a little antsy because it's like, you know, I want the treason trials to start already. Uh, it's told, Speaker of College should have told the president, etc. Uh, what? I don't know who he's referring to because he's obviously quote retweeting some shit lib f word. It's not allowed to be forced. Okay, well I'll have to look at it later. Uh, okay, poorly. The Texas lawsuit presents a pure question of law. It is not dependent upon disputed facts. Although these unconstitutional changes to the election rules could have facilitated fraud or fraud. The state of Texas doesn't need to prove a single case of fraud to win. It is enough that the four states violated the Constitution. Oh, that is smart. Okay. Oh, and that's true. It is a state. It is the state itself. So where, what court has to adjudicate or uh, process this? I believe that's the word, adjudicate. Adjudicate court law. What does this mean? Adjudication of the legal ruling, a judge is usually filed, but it also prefer the process of selling a legal case or claim through the court or the justice. Of, yeah, so that's exactly, I used it correctly. Yeah, it's it's the second uh, type of meaning. The process of settling this case has to be done on SCOTUS because, you know, would you go to a local court in Texas to settle Texas versus Georgia? <laughs> like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know, you got to go to the Supreme Court for this. So this is really good. And of course, uh, Ted Cruz has already stated that he will help uh, if needed in the Pennsylvania case in SCOTUS uh, when it gets hurt, if it gets hurt technically, but it, it'll, it'll get hurt. The lawsuit asked the Supreme Court to remand the appointment of electors in the four states back to the state legislators. As the Supreme Court said in 1892 in the case of Nick Pearson versus Blacker, whatever provisions may be made by statute or by the state constitution, to choose electors by people, there's no doubt of the right of the legislature to resume the power at any time. Yeah, it's ex it says explicitly in the Constitution they may take it back at any time. Like, I don't know why, like the fake news, I mean, I know why, but the fake news terrorist media is saying, well, state law trumps everything, blah, blah, blah. That's it. There's nothing that can be done. That's 100% wrong, false, uh, and bullshit. And I definitely want, I definitely want like something to separate free speech from news media because right now news media as it stands is just being used to just subvert uh our country so it's just a national security risk right especially since we don't have uh free speech right now to challenge it if texas prevails the four state legislators could follow any of our courses in appointing their presidential electors they could assess the election results and try to exclude those ballots they're counted in violation of state law in order to turn away, or they could divide the electoral college votes between the two candidates, or they could follow a different path. Uh, but they will have to follow the custody in whatever they do. I didn't know you could split your electoral votes. That's it. That's actually interesting. In the rest of the country, the states follow the constitutional rules of appointing presidential electors. The offending states cannot be allowed to violate those same rules. It's just a matter of constitutional law. It's a matter of basic fairness. Uh, then here's his blurb. 
So this is actually really good. I'm actually going to make this the um, uh, part of the headline title when I finish this. So this is really good. So basically, they're bypassing all the fake news terrorism bullshit, and they're just going straight for these four states violated the Constitution. That's it. That's all they have to prove, and they can. And, and it's actually that's what happened, right? They basically the legis the executive branch, and then like non-governmental parties essentially. All right. I mean, you could call the Democratic Party non. I mean, in this, I mean non-governmental in the sense that, you know. They themselves are not, you know, appointed in the actual Georgia government structure, right? You can be part of a political party, but the political party itself is not the government, if that makes sense. So basically, they're just saying all these non-state legis legislature people and courts were f fucking around with the, uh, you know, state elector um, election process in violation of the Constitution. Instead of going through the state legislature, which is what you're supposed to do. So uh, it's definitely a very good, solid bang-up job. Um, this case will probably enjoin with the Pennsylvania case uh, and all the other uh, lawsuits that are making their way in. Uh, in fact, I think Sydney Powell is going to be working her case up through Georgia as fast as she can. Because uh, I don't have to tweet on me, and she, for some reason, hasn't tweeted on her timeline. But she says there will be three SCOTUS cases heading by the end of this week, by Friday. And one of them is obviously going to be Georgia, because yesterday they rejected the Georgia lawsuit that Sydney um brought up right because it was a bullshit it was a bullshit here because it, it was like what do they call it uh when it's a mock trial or a fake trial or a clown trial i forgot what the term is um but that's basically what happened yesterday it, it's a clown court right it's a clown trial or something like that that's basically what happened but the good news is the faster it gets rejected the faster it can move up to scotus so uh, I'm beginning, to, so I'm actually thinking they are deliberately bringing lawsuits to shitlib judges, so they get reject, it gets rejected quickly, so they go straight to the Supreme Court, because that's the only place you're actually going to get any fair hearings. And Justice Alito and Clarence Thomas is already on the case, and I assume all the Trump, like A B A C B, Kavanaugh, and Gorsuch are also pretty much on our side. I can't imagine them rejecting all this shit. And then, you know, John Roberts is the, you know, odd F word out. So I really wish we had free speech. Yeah. So, all right. So it's looking pretty good. Don't let the black pills get to. I, I'm having trouble having to, I don't know, I'm having trouble, but, you know, it's, uh, you, know, you know, I'm doing my best to keep everyone's morale up. So, you know, that's just how it goes. Institutions will protect Bitcoin from growing our reach, Eric Voorhees. So he is the founder and CEO of Shapeshift.io. And funny enough, he actually does follow me on Twitter. So, yeah. Like, I'm always kind of surprised when all these powerful people actually know who I am. But it just doesn't feel that way because it's like they never like or retweet my stuff. But on the other hand, like, Michelle Malkin and I follow each other. But I don't, I hardly ever go to her Twitter timeline at all to like and retweet her stuff. And vice versa, right? She only likes a couple of my posts occasionally. Yeah, which is fine, but I mean, it's just, uh, it's always kind of just interesting in how that whole social dynamic works out. Bitcoin should embrace institutional adoption as it keeps everyone honest, says Eric Voorhees. That's a pretty nice picture. What's the picture over here? See, here's, this is not a very flattering picture. Uh, but um, I, like, I like this one because it's brighter. Institutional investors will play an important role in securing the future of our cryptocurrencies. I'm at 43.35. Uh, like Bitcoin, CEO and founder of Shapeshift, in a panel discussion at the, this year's LUT. Okay, before he said Bitcoin's adoption curve will grow substantially over the next five to ten years. Yeah, it's exponential for sure. Uh, that's what that's what I'm actually. That's why I think this bull run is gonna be the biggest. It's always the biggest ever compared to the last one, but this one is the big one, like the big big one. It's where everyone in the world starts using crypto. As uh, for half the world could be exposed to Bitcoin. That's it, only half. That's still pretty good, though. He believes that mass adoption will occur much later, however, once Bitcoin becomes the global monetary standard. Well, I don't agree that's going to be the monetary standard. Um, global PETA will never, because I can't say global H word, or I can't say what I really want to say. Global PETA will uh, not let that happen. All right? They'll make sure their own cryptocurrencies 
uh, are going to be the global standard. But with that being said, it's kind of hard to... Well, I guess if they just simply made it illegal just to simply have any crypto, like that's what they would have to do, which is why the coronavirus lockdown bullshit is so important to global payto because they really need to start micromanaging people, like down to the very s simple thing. When I went to visit my uh, siblings for Thanksgiving, right, it's like I had to argue with like... Like, like, my nephews who are younger know it's bullshit. But I had to argue with my older siblings because, you know, I don't want to actually dox them. But they're like, why aren't you wearing a mask, Jason? That's, like, so selfish. It's like, it, like it's bullshit. It's like, it's like, see, that's why I'm, like, all in on America first now. Before I was just liking and kind of keeping quiet, low profile, right? But now I just don't give a shit because I'm actually pissed off without the actual emotion of anger. This it's every like, day. Yeah, this every day, right? Because, you know, it's, it is affecting my life constantly on a very personal level. There's a reason why my Twitter and everyone else's Twitter is exploding because everyone's pissed off. It's like things are never going back to the way they should be going. And it's very aggravating. And I know what's going to come, what's going to happen, right? I'm going to be stuck in my home forever. I'm not going to be able to get rich off of crypto because global payday will be like, we can't have these people getting rich off of Bitcoin and then we've got to regulate it and steal it from them. They keep the money for ourselves, and I'm just like irritated, right? And then they're trying to throw China under a bus instead of China and you know Israel, right? Because because that's what they were talking about in that video over here. That of course Fox News completely omits all of the references to uh, Israel. It's just like I just can't. It's just like it's just so aggravating. The panel was virtually unanimous in the view that Bitcoin's versatile entries and different majority in this vein institutional adoption is a net positive for the ecosystem because it ensures that the rules of the game never change and that governments don't try to interfere. Force, he said governments have a great incentive to censor Bitcoin if it's used primarily by retail investors. Oh, well, that's interesting. With large institutions in play, there may be a natural bore against government overreach. This would be true if the institutions were not part of global pay -to. That's That's the unfortunate flaw and i like eric Voorhees. he's actually really cool uh he wasn't one to follow me when i was saying all my crazy shit on twitter so um the problem is that there, there are, these institutions are in on it so that's that's why this thing i wish it were true but it's like mm, it's not gonna really work that's why we gotta get the people themselves who are not the corp big corporation or you know to get into crypto Regarding Bitcoin, Voorhees known that his belief that the greater the mix and diversity of holders, the better for democratization control or money is the essence of Bitcoin. This is 100% true, but we can't concentrate this in rich people, specifically corporations, because it's always going to lead to centralized control. We want to give this to everybody. Although Voorhees says we are still at the very early stages of institutional adoption, 2020 has been a watershed year for the digital ass in terms of okay, major investors like Paul Tudor John and Stan Jerkenheimer, Dr Drunken Miller, have confirmed their stake in Bitcoin, PayPal, and Cash Out are buying up most of the newly minted Bitcoin. And Bitcoin and PayPal is still banning people from their platforms. So it's already started. They're already trying to restrict cryptocurrency. Luckily, uh, you know, we, we could just copy and paste and just buy all this other shit. So, on the one hand, it's great that everyone's getting into crypto. Uh, on the other hand, what I've started my bit this this uh, this whole show that I've been doing, which is just videos on YouTube while I was getting banned all over YouTube. All right, I knew this day was coming. Right, it was just a matter of when. All right, and that day is getting a lot closer. Right, when uh, you know, global payto is gonna just ban Bitcoin, right? They're not going to ban it. What they're going to do is they're going to regulate it to the point that it's essentially a ban. Meanwhile, digital asset grayscale continues to amass Bitcoin Ether amid record inflows into its funds, so that's good. Uh, more money. Bitcoin security supply shortage occurring almost in lockstep with the latest deflationary having event. Now the supply is at 900 Bitcoin a day from mining. Gah, 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 gah. In Voorhees' view, the real surge in initial entry will occur near the peak of the next bull market. So not only Bitcoin will inflate Inflict reputational damage. I've never heard of this, but that's really interesting. I also was under the impression that institutions were quietly buying up Bitcoin and crypto. Higher prices are no issue for major institutions, many of which are waiting for Bitcoin to catch up to their liquidity. Well, what does, I wish he would expand on this, but that's the end of the article. 
Also, I think I kind of want to have some halal cart. Yeah, I know. I'm in New York City, so we got, like, literally everything. And there's no Wendy's here. I, I would have Wendy's every every two days. You know how, like, Nick Fuentes has McDonald's? Well, for me, it's Wendy's. I would also accept Chick-fil-A, too, because it's pretty tasty. Uh, thanks, Father Chad, for following. Um, let's see. Uh, I really should try to tweet this out more so I can, like, get more live viewers, but that's fine. It's, like, whatever. So, anyway, if you like what you saw, read, or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button on wherever you're watching this from, or on my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash GMC Radio. Thank you to everyone that's subscribing on this channel. It's uh, gl gr growing pretty well, and along with my bit shoot. Smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page or on whatever platform you're watching this thing from. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll be spending between now and next week, of course. I'll be in DC later this Saturday. Um, you know, and, you know, I'm trying to juice up uh, all the America First Patriots because I don't have enough room to juice uh, everyone's profile. So, you know, just, you know, do it here. Uh, well, at least this didn't get shadow banned, right? I see a lot of likes and retweets here. It's like my Twitter profile is just so odd, right? You can see like completely weird, different gyrations of like likes and retweets. Like for example, let's go, can I access this without logging in? Yes. Let me show you some really large numbers. All right, I'm especially looking for. Um, well, that said, I only farmed forty-one of four. I mean, I guess I understand why, because like. Especially, like, this is uh, so, what's so annoying about boomer conservatives. Like, well, we got to support the military no matter how much we, we're getting rammed in the ass by everybody else. And that's why we're, we're getting fucked. Um, see, this is the one downside of me tweeting a lot. Here's an okay-sized one. Oh, wait, no, that's my actual. Oh, here's one. Here's a reply. 267 likes, 34 retweets. Like, like this is the like, complete, like, if you were to graph my likes and retweets and put it on a... Oh, on a graph, and you look at the step bell curve at standard deviation, you're going to see a standard deviation of like 200, all right, or 600. That's how insane it is. Here's another big one. Well, oh, actually, this was actually my main one, so that's actually good, so I didn't get banned. Uh, this one was good. Uh, I'm trying to look for the Charlie Kirk one, because um, that eventually got uh, buried, too. Uh, let's see, now this is, I'm trying to find, because I replied to the Charlie Kirk, uh, you can't have America without, uh, this one's doing well, 337, I'm trying to look for the Charlie Kirk one, no, that's, the, that's the quote retort, uh, alright, we're getting closer, I just want to end it on this before we, uh, uh, come on, what, what the fuck, wait, where did it go? Because this is the quill cool retweet. Oh my god. Let me see if I can just find it. Um, I don't know. Maybe TPUSA might have also just blocked me. But I, I was thinking that they don't do that. Because um, I really wanted to just show how much. Because I'm. Oh my god. Where is it? I knew I should have, like found it save the url and then and then bring it out here great i'm literally going through all of my tweets in my notifications and i can't find it oh my god oh this is it fuck off charlie kirk yeah there we go wait this is not the right one here we go i finally found it wait am i blocked by tpusa no, I can still see it. That's good, because one thing I may, I may want to experiment with is trolling TPUSA and just start farming their tweets. So I can start bringing people over to our side. Yeah, so... Oh, nice. Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to ratio them, but... See, this is annoying, all right? We have way too many idiots that are still, like, pro, you know, over here, tribe. Uh, and then I, and then this thing's actually a little censored, because, like, they down the algorithm downgraded me. Probably because I used the... I, I assume people are report f-wording my tweeter, but I mean I always stay safe. But yeah, I got 328 likes for this, <laughs> and all I say is just fuck off, Charlie Kirk. <laughs> so and there's a bunch of other people doing the same thing too, which is great because we gotta show we gotta show TPUSA that you know. <laughs> I shouldn't steal other people's tweets, but maybe next time I'll actually do this. 
<laughs> this is really good. Look, yeah, this is a really good ratio too. So, you know, we, we definitely have to make our voices heard, you know. You know, and she's doing pretty well too, Santa for you. But it's because fortunately we still have people simping for women, good looking women. It's like whatever, you know. So uh yeah, you can probably look at this thread if you want. But uh yeah, we just uh we just gotta keep fighting. We gotta keep fighting the good fight. So I'm gonna check chat one more time. Thank you. They call me JD for following. I wonder if you're like the actual JD, but yeah, that's a different icon. Uh, but anyway, um, all right, I better get ready for SCOTUS potential news. I gotta start go back to farming my tweets because uh, apparently my followers are not going up for some reason. And I gotta check to see if I'm being because uh, I definitely see my notifications going off. So I don't know. But uh, I mean, as long as it's just continuing to farm, then you know whatever. Um, so anyway, I will see you all next Tuesday for the next Bitcoin Clown World. Otherwise, I'll probably see you in whatever live stream I happen to do next. You know, because it's going to be a crazy uh, news week. So you know, bag talk or whatever. You know, my own thing. And then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, take it one day at a time. I really hope Trump does not wait till January 18th, though, because, again, I kind of need to make money, right? And I want this to resolve correctly so that we can all make $480,000 off of Predicted. I actually was wondering how people have, like, 50, 60,000 percent ROI in Predicted, according to their leaderboards. Now I know why. They've been flipping high-value um, bets, and they're going line by line, and then they, it keeps going in their favor. But unlike gambling, here you actually can figure out why it's doing it. So, and then you can also affect the outcome, which is why I'm also going to these rallies. I, mean, I would have gone for free anyway, but it's just nice to have you know God compensating me and Jesus Christ compensating me for some of this crazy stuff. Because you know, a my feet hurt when I go to these things, and then b you know I'm still losing fifty to seventy five dollars a day, right? Especially now that you know mining income is starting to go to turd shit. So. You know, really could use a payday, right? Could really use a payday. Anyway, I'll see you next time, either next week at latest or any time between now and uh, this coming next week. And then, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Johnson Chan, JMC Coin. I'm thinking maybe I should let JMC Coin go. 100 Coin, Speed Coin, uh, Seditionist Tower Defense. Uh, what do we want for, like, this is a much better eye-popping thing, but, eh, alright, well, I guess we'll just go with this, you know, whatever.